welcome back students uh, today uh, i'm going to continue with the uh, next topic topics of the sexual reproduction of flowering plants okay so in my last video uh, i discussed about this double fertilization okay now today i am going to discuss uh, uh, the post fertilization events but before that okay uh, two important topics i am left with that is uh, those two topics i am going to discuss first then i am going to start with the post fertilization events okay so again as usual sit with your copy and pen okay uh, note down all the important things okay so it is going to help you a lot fine so <clears throat> the topic that i am going to discuss today first is the out breeding devices the out breeding devices is a very important topic here questions come from this topic okay what is what are these out breeding devices out breeding devices are some steps or initiatives taken by most of the flowering plants okay to encourage cross pollination okay or you can say to discourage self pollination these are the initiatives or steps taken by the plants on their own okay the flowering plants on their own okay no human involvement is here you have to understand this very clearly okay plants take these initiatives on their own fine so before getting into the steps what are the steps we have to understand why the step as i said that to encourage cross pollination and to discourage self pollination okay so why is this so why to discourage or why to avoid self pollination and why to promote cross pollination there is a statement the line given in an ncert i am writing the statement here that continued self breeding okay continued self breeding may lead to in breeding depression in breeding depression so within quote this is very very important okay continued self pollination or self breeding or you can say self pollination also no issue at all okay may lead to in breeding depression this is the sentence given this is very very important meaningful statement to this okay so what is the meaning of this statement that we have to understand first continued self breeding or self pollination continued means is generation after generation okay if it is self pollination happening or self breeding it is happening then it may lead to inbreeding depression so this term is very very important inbreeding depression so we have to understand first what is this inbreeding depression all about directly speaking the biological meaning of i say the inbreeding depression is reduced biological reduced biological fitness reduced biological fitness okay so from the sentence this itself you can understand what is the meaning okay if generation after generation okay cell breeding goes on a cell pollination goes on the generations the population are going to face you know uh, face you no know, unfitness biologically physiological physically they'll feel you know, they'll they'll feel unfit okay then it's called reduced biological fitness okay okay now this reduced biological reduced biological fitness may okay it may uh, you know as a consequence of you can say that as a consequence of uh, population bottleneck population bottleneck there is a sharp decrease in population i am writing here 
sharp decrease in population so sharp decrease in population may lead to reduced biological fitness see what happens is that if the population is huge then what happens is that we will see genetic variation in the population and more the genetic variation more the capability to survive it means the biological fitness is much better which will help to survive the population for long time but if the population is less means this population have less of genetic variation and less genetic variation cannot support a population for long time to survive okay that is why it leads to the reduced biological fitness slowly slowly the biologically the members of the population okay uh, they become unfit to survive so this is what the meaning of inbreeding depression okay i hope the meaning is clear so continued cell pollination may lead to that is inbreeding depression i hope this is clear so two marks question three marks question may come to explain the statement the meaning of this on this topic two three marks question may come in the examination on this uh, separately inbreeding depression may be uh, what do you understand by uh, inbreeding depression so what i said you can uh, write as an answer or this statement may be given or it can be asked to explain it the statement so you can explain it okay so now <clears throat> now see this continuous self pollination or self breeding leads to inbreeding depression means it is negative for the plants to survive okay that is why plants uh, mostly the flowering plants okay uh, they produce you know hermaphrodite flowers i mean bisexual flowers most of the you know flowering plants they produce bisexual flowers it means that if the flower is bisexual self pollination is very much common the probability is the self pollination only most cases okay so it means that they have a tendency to suffer to get into this inbreeding depression problem okay that is why they the plants the flowering plants on their own they take some initiatives some steps so that they can promote cross pollination they can avoid or discourage self pollination so the logic i hope it is understood okay so let's see what are these steps the initiatives are known as outbreeding devices okay that discourage discourage or avoid self pollination and which promote or encourage cross pollination okay these are the inbreeding devices now what is what are these devices we will see one by one the steps we will see one by one number 1 it is the unisexuality unisexuality see as i said that most of the flowering plants they produce uh, bisexual flowers so bisexual flower means stigma and anther are present in the same flower so definitely this atmosphere promotes self pollination but if the plants start producing unisexual flowers male flowers are different female flowers are different in that case definitely it promotes cross pollination if it is in the same plant also doesn't matter still it promotes cross pollination okay so this is the first step unisexual let's produce the unisexual flowers so obviously we are you know uh, increasing the probability for cross pollination so if cross pollination happens obviously there is no you know uh, question of the you know that we will be no question i mean to say that there is a probability that we can uh, avoid uh, that is biological unfitness that is the inbreeding depression so this is the first step unisexual unisexual flowers okay second point dichogamy dichogamy the meaning of dichogamy is that uh, the maturity of the of the of the anther and the stigma is not synchronized 
okay maturity you can say maturity is not synchronized now what is this meaning now it is of two different types let me explain it number one protandry protandry what is the meaning of this protandry means protandry means when anther matures earlier than stigma okay let me write it here anther matures earlier okay then stigma so pollination is in between anther and stigma only we know it so if suppose anther matures earlier than stigma then what will happen anther will be cracked the pollen grains will be shedded and it will be landing on the stigma but stigma is not yet matured so you can understand if it is not mature obviously the post pollination events are not going to happen right so in this case the pollen grains will be grains will be damaged as simple as that right so post pollination events mean i mean to say the you know the pollen germination after landing on the stigma then pollen tube formation uh, taking the male gametes into the ovary into the ovule and then the fertilization these are the post pollination events that we have already studied so it's a protandry number 2 protogeny this is your stigma matures earlier opposite okay so it means that if the stigma getting mature earlier then if pollen grain so whatever pollen grain is not i mean anther is not mature so stigma it mat mature so it means that now as you will the same flower okay stigma is mature anther is not mature so anther is not mature means pollen grains are not shedding at the time when the stigma is already mature now what will happen two chances is there one is that the stigma on its own will get damaged because there is a time of maturity second what will happen that as its own uh, uh, pollen grain is not coming so stigma is mature the pollen grain from any other flower may come and land on the stigma and pol and next events will take place in this case it is cross pollination if the pollen grain coming from other other flowers and landing on the mature stigma so it is promoting cross pollination right so this is the two thing for protandry and protogeny coming under diagogamy okay please uh, write this down in your copy is a very important number 3 we will discuss here number 3 we will discuss here uh, heterostyly number 3 heterostyly okay what is the meaning of heterostyly heterostyly means the length the length of the anther and the stigma is not same so let's talk about is height 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 of the anther and the stigma is not same see uh, pollination is viable it's 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 uh, you know favorable condition when the height of the anther and stigma is same now if anther is much taller than the stigma or the stigma is much taller than the anther so you can understand the landing on the pollen grain on the stigma becomes difficult in this case obviously it is avoiding self but this is how we can the plant can avoid self pollination and uh, it promotes cross pollination okay stigma pollen grains are not uh, you know landing on the uh, on the stigma because of the high difference huge height okay difference either anther taller either stigma taller so both the cases it is tough to land on the stigma so obviously another uh, pollen grains may easily land on the stigma so it is promoting cross pollination so this is number 3 so i am loving this part three points we have seen number 4 is the harpogamy harpogamy now what is this harpogamy how harpogamy means these are the some of the uh, physical barriers you can say physical barriers that prevents the cell pollination 
okay like for example uh, one good example is there yeah extrusive dehiscence of anther it means what it means that see uh, if the anther dehiscence means dehiscence means cracking or bursting of the anther once it matures so that pollen grain can released out of the anther that is the meaning of dehiscence okay now extrusive dehiscence of anther means the anther it may crack or mature or i mean sorry it may crack or burst in such way or in such direction that the pollen grains are releasing from the anther but it is unable these pollen grains are unable to land on the stigma maybe the the bursting of the anther uh, may happen in just of the opposite direction of the stigma suppose this is stigma here okay and uh, this is anther here now the anther is burst in this direction the pollen grains are released in this direction but stigma is in this direction so it is an opposite so this is you can understand that pollen grains you know may be released in another direction in the opposite direction of the stigma so uh, it is not directly landing on the stigma so it may you know definitely promote the cross pollination it is avoiding the self pollination so uh, this is one hypogamy number 5 self incompatibility self incompatibility what does this mean self incompatibility means what happens in some cases it has been found that the pollen grain it is produced by the anther okay the anther the pollen grains are also landing on the stigma they are mature at the same time everything is okay all the situations all the factors are okay but the pollen grain fail to germinate because of some reason okay uh, let us say it is genetic uh, genetic defect defective expression okay fail to express okay so somehow the the pollen grain fail to germinate on the stigma so there is a incompatible pollen grain you can say so in this case uh, any any compatible pollen grain if if land on the stigma the pollen germination will take place the tube will be formed and everything will happen but as its own pollen grain is incompatible it is not uh, compatible enough to germinate on the stigma okay that is a self incompatible so these are the some you know, five steps that i have discussed with you these are the outbuilding devices okay the initiatives taken by the plant on its own to avoid self pollination and to promote cross pollination okay so in the examinations also uh, you will be writing the answers in these five points okay fine now our next topic let's start this our next topic is pollen pistil interaction okay in the pollen pistil interaction what happens is that the stigma have the capacity okay to or the pistil you can say the pistil have the capacity to recognize or identify the pollen grain whether it is of our same type or it is different the pollen grain which is going to land on land on the stigma it has to be of same species it has to be of same as of the of the of the you know uh, pistil okay if it is coming from a different plant which is of different species and if the pollen grain lands on the uh, stigma of another species so it is not going to you know the next events are not going to take place the next post pollination events are not going to take place 
so that's why stigma have the capacity they have a kind of chemical dialogue in between them once the pollinator lands on the stigma they have a you know chemical dialogue in between them so that the stigma uh, is able to identify recognize whether the stigma pollen being uh, landing on us it is of same species it is of same type or it is of it is coming from different species if it is coming from different species the pollen tube will not form the stigma will not allow the pollen grain to germinate on its stigma okay but the if pollen grain coming from the same species or the same plant okay or different plant of same species it is landing on the stigma the stigma will recognize it and then uh, it will allow the pollen bean to germinate okay and the pollen tube will be forming and next post pollination events will take place so this is what the pollen pistil interaction okay like anything uh, i mean the pollen grains from any other plants of different species coming and landing on the stigma and if the post pollination even post pollination even take place then the picture will be different so it is against nature so it doesn't happen naturally okay so this is what the pollen pistil interaction so our next topic this is uh, <clears throat> i'm going to discuss now so it is the arbitrary devices i am done the uh, pollen pistil interaction i am done i hope that uh, these two topics are very clear to you okay still if you have uh, doubt if you want to ask me any question i'm always there okay please ask me question in a comment box i'll definitely answer your question okay fine now i am going to start with the uh, that the topic that we left in my on our last video okay the double fertilization we are completed with now i am supposed to start with the post fertilization events okay so let me write here post fertilization it is the post fertilization events i am going to discuss now okay Uh, i hope you remember the double fertilization process that we have discussed okay now what happens after this fertilization that we will see if you remember in that mature uh, embryo sac we have uh, seen seven cells okay i'm not drawing now anymore okay i'm just writing the points here so number one the antipodals there are three antipodals if you remember three cells three antipodal cells are there number 2 uh, there are uh, synergic cells synergic cells there are two synergic cells number 3 uh, central cell there is a polar nuclear that is one and number 4 uh, egg cell okay that is one so 5 6 7 so seven cells okay now we will see what happened to this after fertilization <clears throat> see antipodal cells normally they degenerates but before okay so normally they degenerates okay but before that what happens is that they provide nourishment to the central cell okay they provide nourishment to the central cell i am not adding the function here okay they provide nourishment to the central cell or the polar nuclei you can write it down second synergic cell not not much explanation is required i am just telling the what happens to them what they do actually synergic cell synergic cell also degenerates degenerates okay and function is they also provide nourishment to the growing embryo embryo means where the male and female gamete fertilization takes place okay there the zygote produce the embryo is supposed to be developed in this development of the embryo these cells provide the nourishment nutrients number 3 central cell okay so uh, let's write here in short nourishment it is function also nourishment okay to the central cell this is also function of nourishment to the growing embryo so you write here growing embryo and this is the uh, central cell first one now i am going to talk about the central central cell and the egg cell let's talk about the central cell first central cell if you remember there was a structure that is called triploid structure so let's write here triploid structure we have seen here as a result of triple fusion 
okay because two nuclei were already there inside the cell central cell and one male gamete carry one nucleus so they get fused three nucleus that's the triploid structure comes here now as they are maturing okay during that time different stage of maturation we'll see first this central cell that develops into p e n okay p e n that is the primary endosperm nucleus primary endosperm nucleus then it develops into s e n that is the secondary secondary endosperm nucleus okay then it develops into t e n that is the tertiary endosperm nucleus understood this is the uh, this is actually the mature endosperm so this is actually the mature endosperm so the central cell okay develops into mature endosperm endosperm is nothing but a structure okay which rich in nutrients okay and these nutrients are provided uh, for the development of the embryo okay so this is endosperm one of question may come what is the function of endosperm so again nourishment providing nutrients to the growing embryo okay so this is the future of the central cell i hope it's clear okay now we will see the egg cell what happens to this after fertilization so first thing is that okay let's let's rub this part okay <clears throat> egg cell once fertilized the egg cell becomes what zygote we know it zygote zygote is nothing but a cell okay so let's now i'm going to draw a diagram okay how it develops how the zygote develops okay it is the zygote okay that develops into now developing how mitosis cell division okay mitosis cell division so 2 to 2 to it will be dividing so it continues dividing two cell with two nuclei okay so this stage uh, let me say it is the pro pro embryonic stage this is the pro embryonic stage okay now <clears throat> next is that it it is continuation it is in continuation uh, of mitosis cell division i am not uh, showing each and every step let's come to the um, the second the, the, the next important you know step for you continuous mitosis cell division and it develops into there are cells see what happens is that this is known as okay globular okay let me label it here globular embryo see <clears throat> and these are the suspensor suspensor cells see from here till this this is the till here this is the embryo part very important thing i am going to tell see till here starting from here the whole part till here this is the part of the embryo 
Now what is happening? This part is the endosperm. Remember that in the mature embryo sac, three antipodal cells degenerates, two synergid cells degenerates. Only who are left? The endosperm and the zygote. Now this endosperm and zygote are going to connect with each other and they are going to form the embryo, mature embryo. Okay, so this part till here is the embryo here and this is the endosperm. So connecting with the endosperm. I told you if you remember that just now I told that endosperm function is to provide nourishment to the growing embryo. So connectivity is very important with the endosperm. So the suspensor cells connecting with the endosperm and the embryo. Okay, what is the next step after this? After this, let me love this. This part becoming slow, the changes in the shape, how it comes. Suspensor cells here. Okay, this structure is known as this is the nucleus here. This structure is known as the next developmental stage. Okay, next important developmental stage. Means the mitosis keep on going. So next, this is known as heart-shaped embryo. Okay. Now next important stage. <clears throat> this part become much more smaller. Very uh, uh, easy diagram, okay, not tough. You have to practice this diagram, okay. So, this is the next uh, stage of development. This is the mature embryo. Okay, so let's write here. This is the mature embryo. This is the mature embryo. Okay, so let's let's level it. Okay, so this is the radical part. Okay. These are these two, these two are the I am writing a cotyledon. See what I have drawn here, two cotyledons you can see. So this is dicot I am drawing actually. So it is a you can say the portion if comes, I want to explain the uh, uh, development of dicot uh, embryo. So this is a dicot embryo. Okay. And uh, this part is the Okay, so this is a thing. Fine. So 
this is the mature embryo okay step by step very important you have to practice this don't forget to label this suspensor cell this is also suspensor cell okay <clears throat> same way it comes now one more step comes after this of dicot embryo okay let me love all these things okay uh in a very small diagram i am going to draw here because space because i want to keep all the that picture in the same you know uh here same page so i have to draw in a very small way so after this the next one okay so very simple way i am drawing i have drawn here so this is the <clears throat> radical part this is a root cap these two are the cotyledons this part is the plumule okay so this is what the uh the next developmental stage of this one okay so dicot embryo development is how the embryo develop this is one a uh, good example with the diagrams okay in dicot okay now <coughs> practice of this diagrams the labeling is very very important steps one after another the sequencing maintaining is maintenance is also very very important now monocot uh, uh, embryo that is uh, monocot embryo development i am not going to draw the diagram here i am just going to show you uh, what is there in the ncert book that you have to practice it in a good manner see uh, this uh, two pictures are given so i have drawn here and this is the picture is the monocot embryo or the it is given in the class is the monocot the uh, diagram is given here is very very important to draw okay now related to this topic there are terms like uh, <clears throat> uh hypocotyl part okay hypocotyl part which this part is actually the hypocotyl part okay i have not label you can label it here this part is the hypocotyl part which ends up at the root cap okay and the epicotyl part which which ends up at the plumule part okay now there is some coleoctyl and coleorhiza these two terms will come i am going to discuss this in my next topic coleoctyl do this is to this topic but it is extension of this topic in my next video there i'm telling about you about the uh, the coleoctyl and coleorhiza okay so let me see that any other topic for today uh, do i need to okay uh, fine so uh, i think uh, for today this much is okay now small uh, part is left i hope in my next video i will be able to complete this chapter okay i hope i have covered everything uh, one last if i remember that there is a artificial uh, uh, <coughs> pollination uh, is there artificial uh, breeding pollination there is one two terms are there that is a uh, uh emasculation and bagging what actually i am doing is that i am exactly following the ncert topics okay so i don't want to miss any uh, important topics here emasculation and bagging is very uh, a very simple thing okay uh, or you can say artificial hybridization uh, in in the context of artificial hybridization uh, uh, we should uh, we do this emasculation and bagging uh, better not to use that artificial pollination that is a wrong term actually is artificial hybridization okay so uh, then we follow this emasculation and begging process emasculation is the suppose if you uh, assume it's a bisexual flower 
and we are uh, we want to avoid we now human being are involved in this case okay so so i am the uh, researcher okay and i want to uh, i want the poly, the, the pollen i don't i don't want the pollen vein from the same flower to be landing on the stigma so i cut i separate i remove the anther from that flower so removing cutting and removing the anther from the flower is the emasculation okay then what is left in the flower is the stigma okay now what i uh, what, what, what what i do i just need to you know protect or cover the stigma okay with a, a plastic bag or sack like structure why i'm covering this so that pollen is from any abcd flower flower should not come and land on the stigma i have chosen a particular uh, uh, flower uh, from whom I will take the pollen grain, I'll be shedding on the stigma once it matures. So it is totally on an experimental basis. Okay, I want uh, I want to get into this uh, uh, process. Okay, that uh, the hybridization will take place. Okay, according to my choice, my selection. So I don't want any ABCD uh, 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 flowers pollen grain to be landing on my stigma. That's why I covered it with a plastic bag or sack. Okay, now once it matures, I'll be, this, this is the bagging. Uh, uh, I can say bagging process. Okay, so it's so a bag that I was bagging the uh, I bagged to cover the uh, stigma, and once it matures, I remove the bag, the sack, and then I will bring the 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 anther of my choice, and I wish uh, no, I'll uh, I'll have the pollen being you know like this this kind of process of shedding on the stigma like this. Once you just shed shake it, the pollen beans will automatically be uh, shedding on the stigma. Okay. Because they will light the pollen grain. So if you just shake here on the on the on the stigma, it will be shedding on the stigma, and automatically the pollen uh, tube will be formed, germination, and these things will happen. This is totally uh, the emasculation and begging process uh, uh, related to the artificial hybridization. Okay, simple one marks, two marks question. Fine. So I hope for today's topic, for whichever I selected for today, I have done with those. So uh, next video, I hope I'll be able to finish this chapter. Okay, so please see this video again and again. Okay, and uh, see I want to sh I want you to share my video. Okay, with your friend. It is my intention is not to you know uh, gain something else like most of the people or some people. Okay, they have uh, other their you know uh, profession to this, but my job is here that. Uh, this is the lockdown period okay and even after that if this video has helped the students more and more students so you can share this with your friends okay who are uh, in, uh, with uh, problems to these topics who want to study these topics okay share with them okay and you also please uh, uh, note down all the important things see again and again pause the video write this down and if anywhere any terminology anything any concept that you don't understand Please do ask me in the uh, comment box. Okay, I'll definitely answer your question. Okay, thank you very much.